And, and, and that's why I want to bring in now, uh, not Tongu MP, Samuel Lokuje to Ablakwa. Uh, Honorable, uh, good evening to you. I'm so glad that you could stay awake to talk to us. But you've seen these documents. What do you think now? I am clear in my mind that the Ministry of Education is complicit in this scandal. And that is why I insist that we cannot count nor rely on the Ministry of Education to conduct a credible investigation into this matter. We need an independent body. Look, we expect the Ministry of Education not to be defending companies that have engaged in criminal enterprises. They should be defending the vulnerable children. We have placed our children under the care of the Ministry of Education. And in all of this, the Ministry of Education is spending all their time defending a criminal enterprise which has gone on. Look, all of those letters that the PRO is putting out, there is one fundamental issue he has not addressed. If Lamens Africa Investment Limited had approval by FDA to engage in that criminal enterprise, why were they fined? Why did the FDA fine laments 100,000 Ghana cities? And laments, I have published the letter where laments admits to their culpability, their infractions of the Public Health Act, that they were, they were rebugging this right without approval, that they were using a storage facility belonging to the National Food Buffer Stock Company we did not have. FDA registration, and they paid half, 50,000 Ghana cities. I have the receipt received by the FDA on the 5th of January this year. So if Laments has approval, Laments was allowed to extend the shelf date. Why is it that Laments was fined? And why is it that Laments wrote on the 3rd of January this year, accepting Culpability. Look, we are not kids in this country. They should not add insult to injury. You have supervised the distribution of expired and contaminated rice to our students. And instead of taking responsibility, instead of making sure heads roll, and instead of assuring us that this would never happen, look, is the Ministry of Education going to tell us? that they also had authorization from the FDA to change the origin of this right. Mm -hmm. You know that in the rebagging they did, they changed the origin from India to Ghana. Are they telling us that they had authorization for that? Mm. Are they also telling us that they had authorization not to indicate when this right expires? Because you know that under our laws, every packaged food must have a clearly inscribed expiration date or, or, or sell-by date or best-before date. That is what our laws stipulate very clearly. And yet, the rebag rice, the repackaged rice, which they distributed to our schools, did not have an expiry date. Are they telling us that they had authorization from the FDA to violate our laws, look, this matter, the more they speak, the more they try to defend themselves, mm -hmm. the more they come up with this concocted justification, the more I am convinced the heads must roll, that mm. people must go to jail for this. Very well. So just a few things I'd like to clarify. Um, the documents I share, uh, you know, do not come from the education ministry. Um, but of course, I'm not going to disclose who my source is, but just to clarify that point. Now, secondly, I want to touch on the issue of no expiry dates on the uh, re repackaged rice. Uh, Laments is saying that that is why they wrote to the, uh, the FDA with support from their India supplier, who wrote to the, to the FDA as well to say that the rice could have shelf life up to December of 2024 if 
it is stored under the appropriate conditions. How does that come to you? Again, this is so scary that Lamez was allowed to engage in all of this dangerous conduct which place the health of our children at such great risk. I have published that since February 2024, FDA certificate of analysis, the examination of the rice, the sample that was taken by the Ashanti Regional Police Command when they went moved in to lock up the NAFCO storage facility upon a tip-off that they were rebagging rice illegally. They were engaged in that criminal conduct. That test result shows that this rice in question did not conform to standards. It had a high fat acidity and it had high insect infestation. Mm. I have published all of those on the mm -hmm. 6th of February. Mm -hmm. So 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 this this claim by Lamens and your sources that the FDA says that the food is wholesome. I mean, when? I mean, are they then suggesting that there are two sets of results? Mm -hmm. the, ones, the, ones, the ones that they have that is unknown to anybody and only to be published today, and the one that was received by all parties in, the, in this matter, the police and the FDA in Ashanti region, for which the FDA acted and fined the company. I mean, what's going on here? Look, this matter is getting more murkier, more bizarre. And in all of this, we are not convinced that that rice, mm. which has been fed to our students, should have been fed. If you read the internal memo of the FDA of 29 December 2023, it is clear that the FDA was convinced that this rice ought to be destroyed. This rice should have been destroyed. It should have been disposed of. It should have been burnt. Mm -hmm. It should not have it should not have been served to our students. Right. And that is why we need an independent commission of inquiry to look into this matter. And all the the Ministry of Education officials, the heads of our schools who received rice without expiry date and jeopardize the health of our children have questions to answer. Mm, I see. And then also on the country of origin, my source within La Mens tells me that really, when you supply to the schools and you repackage the rice, they don't come in named, all the rice are, are, are you know, the, the packaging that is used to bag the rice is already labeled made in Ghana or, or the ECOWAS packaging. And do you find this to be true? It is not true. And you see, they continue with the Baudadash. This is Moshosho rice from India. I have the bill of lading. I have every detail when it arrived. It is Moshosho rice from India. Why are you deceiving users, the students, the schools, that this is a made in Ghana rice in a different bag that you have written made in Ghana. They should read the airline on, on, on food packaging. They should read the Public Health Act. This is criminal, what they have done. Totally criminal, misleading, deceiving the public. Totally criminal. Mm. And that is why those directors at Laments must face the music. They will be prosecuted. I assure them that even if it doesn't happen now, when the NDC comes to power from 7 January 2025, they will face prosecution because mm. the laws are very clear. At 851, it's very clear. People who engage in this criminal conduct ought to be prosecuted. And I want to assure them that they will not get away with their crimes. Mm. I see. Honorable, I just hold the line for me. I want to bring in also uh, Education Watchers Executive Director Kofi Asare, because you, you may have heard uh, Honorable Okujeto Ablakwa talk about the education ministry hinting of a probe into the moldy rice scandal. Kofi, 
Uh, good, uh, good evening, excuse me, I almost said afternoon, but good evening to you, Kofi. But you say that as an industry watcher, this is not news to you at all. Why? Because it happened a year ago. Good evening to your cherished audience. It happened mm. a year ago. We had the last quarter of last year, that's when, you know, I mean, this information, you know, hit our schools. And so um, it's not news. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not concerning. It's very, very, very concerning, but um, it's not news. I'm aware that um, some investigations was, were conducted by the FDA. Um, we don't have the final reports, but I'm told the SDFD um, made some findings in respect of breaches in the security, um, quality assurance mechanisms, and then um, compliance mechanisms in the warehouse of the National Fast Talk in the National Anti Region, and then um, find the company that was involved, uh, La Mes. What I do not know is the extent to which these recommendations were implemented to improve, to improve warehouse security, food security, um, not just in the warehouses of number first talk, but also within the food um, supply chain. Um, and so I was a bit surprised that the PRO of the ministry was saying that the ministry was going to look into it. You know, I I think that is the PRO's opinion. I will be surprised that the Ministry of Education in its entirety um, is not aware of this. Um, they should be, they, I mean, it will be difficult to appreciate that. So I'm sure if VRO has spoken to the Free Senate Secretariat or the Minister or the Deputy Minister or other officials in the Ministry who work, you know, in liaison with the buffer stock, um, he, he would have had a different opinion. I think that the Ministry ought to be aware of this. And that's what we have to do now. It's not another inquiry. The ministry cannot investigate the FDA. Mm -hmm. What should happen is that if the honorable um, the member of parliament has cause to believe that the investigation was not comprehensive enough and that there are other infractions that were not dealt with by the, by the work of the FDA, um, I think that he can bring uh, take the issue to parliament um, so that parliament, as part of its oversight, you know, can scrutinize whatever work the FDA did. And then also, most importantly, um, go ahead to ascertain whether the recommendations that were made in that preliminary report have been implemented in the warehouses of the buffer stock company to ensure that um, food meant for our children um, are kept safe and mm. then are safe to consume. Mm. I see. But Kofi, these 22,000 bags that uh, the Honorable Member of Parliament has pointed to have already been fed to the children. Uh, what, what, what can we do about that? So the children have eaten this problematic rice already. Yes, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Now. This one, this is, this is um, no news because they've been finished eating it long ago. Um, so um, if, if you, for now, we don't have any, any evidence from the FDA that indicates that the rice was expired. We don't have the information from the SD, FD certifying that the rice had indeed expired. The information we have is that the rice was repackaged illegally without the supervision of the SD, contrary, FD, contrary to provisions in the Public, um, Public Health Act and then also um, the LI. So um, if there is information that the rice had expired, according to the FDA, then there is a basis for a further inquiry, mm. you know, uh, because all we want to ensure is that health and safety protocols are not breached, health and safety regulations are not sidestepped, mm. you know, and that they are upheld because the quality of human lives in our senior high schools, you know, um, continues to be premium. And that is why I'm saying that I, I don't see the Ministry of Education having any business in but, investigating, you know, investigating sure ministry, this matter. I'm sure that's, that's an opinion of the PR. The ministry, I mean, I'll be surprised the ministry says they won't investigate mm. them because they should, they but, but, should, they but, but you know, this already. The ministry is firmly on the ground when it comes to free senior high school. Nothing happens in any school without the end of the free senior, or, or the ministry. Much more something happening at the regional level, which affects almost, you know, all schools mm. and being fed from that particular warehouse. Mm. And so I think that the ministry rather should be interested in following up from the FDA to find out who, the outcome of its investigations, if they were conclusive, push further. If they were not, uh, I mean, they were conclusive, 
push push further to ensure that recommendations made to buffer stock have been implemented. Recommendations well, made to MOE have been implemented. So that everybody within the value chain plays their role to ensure that um, health and safety uh, standards are upheld. But, but, but in the meantime, does it not, you know, leave room to question the kinds of foods that the children are fed, fed in the school and what quality checks are in place right now? You know, it seems to burst a bigger problem. You see, this is not the first time. I mean, in May this year, FDA, FDA sees food staff in Zwarungu Senior High School, including Free Senior High School Mackerel and many other food staff that had all expired. FDA had to go to the school, inspect the school's warehouse, food store, food store, and then seize them. And so um, that concern has always been there. It's not new. You, you understand? It's not new. So yes, we have challenges within the food supply chain. And FDA have been working around the clock, right from the warehouses all the way to the stores of the schools to ensure that the food being kept there ready to be served to our children are safe. And so when such news um, like the Zwarangu Senior High School news broke out, yes, I was worried, you know, that, wow, this is inspired food and they were kept in the school stores. But again, at the same time, I was also happy because it meant that FDA was working, you understand? Because I want to see FDA working, not just in Accra, but then hitting our schools, making sure that only wholesome food is available in the stores, much more being safe to the kids. And so what we can do is to call for a strengthened FDA involvement in, in, in health and safety and, and food safety compliance, mm. right from the warehouses of buffer stock where these foods get you know, supplied all the way to the stores of our senior high schools to ensure that at no point in time should aspired food remain within the value chain. Mm, very well, but you know, no, the, 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 the supply chain. indeed, the, the, you know, the FDA could do its job, but when you have uh, the likes of, the, you know, buffer stock still working with, like in, in this case, when the buffer stock oversaw the repackaging of this, this uh, the, the bags of rice without authorization, then it becomes a problem bigger than just the FDA, isn't it? Yes, it, the FDA alone cannot do this. You see, as a long-term measure, we, we have recommended for about three years now that we should, we should go back to the old system where schools are buying their own food. It makes it easy for responsibility. You see, if the ministry was not involved in any way, in the implementation of the delivery of food to schools. And all the ministry and the genius were doing was to exercise oversight, supervision on school heads, you know, in compliance with um, health and safety, food safety, procurement guidelines in buying their own food. It would have been easier, but you have a situation where most many of the regulatory institutions you know, institutions that should be ensuring that the right things are done are also involved in the procurement. So it makes it very, very difficult because you spend a lot of time, you know, focusing on how food, uh, food is procured and supplied to the schools. And so you have very little space to do quality assurance. But okay. if you're not involved in implementation, then it frees you, um, it frees your hand, uh, for want of a better word, mm. to supervise the schools and make sure that the head teachers head do the right thing. I'm not saying that when you decentralize food stuff procurement, you won't have issues. You will have issues. But then the ministry, in that case, and the genius would have more space within their minds to supervise the implementation of laid down protocols in food safety, in procurement, etc. you know, in our senior high schools. Well. So I think that that's one of the ways that we can solve um, this problem. Once you are keeping bulk food, mm -hmm. bulk food stuff, in warehouses, you know, and, and, and things like this actually within a supply chain, it's likely food will stay at the point and expire. Very well. I'm not sure food will stay that longer if a school bought what they needed for a term in mm. just, I mean, that particular school. And Very so, well, Kofi, I, I'm afraid we'll have to end our conversation here, but thank you for talking to us. Kofi Asare is Executive Director for Africa Education Watch. I still have with me not on OMP, uh, Samuel Okujito Ablakwa. Honorable, Kofi is looking up to you to do something about, uh, you know, about this. Uh, what, what could be in there? What, what cast do you have to play now as far as this, this issue is concerned? Yes, uh, let me respond to that in a jiffy. Just to uh, highlight a few uh, points 
that need clarification. Uh, Kofi suggests that there is no evidence that expired food has been served our students. I will uh, uh, ask him respectfully to take a second look at the evidence I have published. So the Boshosho rice expired in December of 2023. Then on the 1st and the 2nd of February, the rice was distributed to our schools. So the clearest indication that an expired rice was delivered to our schools is the fact that if you look at the distribution sheets which I have published, right. where, heads, where heads signed for this rice in February, rice that had expired in December. Yes, but, now, but, but Honorable, now, you, see, now, you see on that, on that score, uh, Laments had got an extension, a shelf life extension, temporary extension from the FDA to have to distribute the rice up until April of 2024. That 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 claim by Laments, I find it dubious because when they distributed the rice on the 2nd of February, they had not received their test results from FDA, which arrived on the 6th of February. So they had no business distributing that rice on the 2nd when the test results, the sample they had sent to FDA, the results came in on the 6th of February. So the laments claim is dubious, and I treat it with a pinch of salt. And I insist that laments has already admitted to their culpability in this matter. They have paid a fine which I call a slap on the wrist. Laments directors should have been prosecuted for what they did. So it is not in doubt. The evidence I have seen, the documents I am working with, it is clear that Laments put the health of our students, our children at risk. They had absolutely no business distributing that right. If it had not been pressure from above, Laments should have had their directors arrested and prosecuted. This point has to be made very, very clearly. Then this claim of, uh, of extension, if you read the laws, FDA does not have any authority to, to extend shelf life. I have gone to the Public Health Act mm -hmm. and I don't know on what authority. And I have asked other questions. So are they saying that is the FDA that asked them to change the origin from India to Ghana? Is it the FDA that gave them authorization to violate our LI 1542 and distribute food items without an expiry date? I mean, look, there are multiple infractions which have happened. This matter, people will have to be prosecuted and precedent has to be set which will serve as a deterrent for those who place profiteering money. Very well above the health of our children. Now, let me quickly respond to Kofi Asari's uh, request about how parliament comes in. He is right that parliament must step in because I've gone through the FDA's report and a lot of the findings and the recommendations have not been implemented. For example, are you aware that as we speak, Very well, it seems we have lost uh, the honorable I mean, member. Can you believe that? Honorable, are you still with us? Because uh, you He's know going to step the, in. the line trip, the line tripped a little bit, uh, and and unfortunately, also we are out of time. We'll have to end our conversation here. But thank you very much for uh, you know the clarity you bring to uh, the uh, conversation around the mold, moldy rice scandal. Thank you so much. Uh, Honourable Member of Parliament for North Tongu, Samuel Kujeto Ablako, I've been talking about that, you know, issue he's brought to light in the last few days about some expired rice allegedly fed to uh, senior high school students across the country. I've also shown you the documents that I have received through my sources from Lamens. And then we've had a, convers a conversation of how to move forward from here to get to the bottom of the issue and know why the students were, were fed the 22,000 bags of rice. You're here on Ghana Tonight.